Having the OSCP certification is no longer enough to land a job in the field today. Now, back in the day, getting into cybersecurity was as simple as get a certification or two, have some experience on CTF sites such as Hack the Box or Try Hack Me, and then apply. Now, unfortunately, things are no longer so simple and you can find many very hardworking hackers out there that you know, they actually tried harder and earned their OSCPs only to be wondering why they still can't even land a job interview. So I think that part of the problem with this is that there are tons of videos out there telling you what you need to do to get your OSCP, but no one really ever talks about what to do after getting your OSCP certification. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you the steps that you should be taking after you get your OSCP cert. Now, really quick, before we get into that, if you have your OSCP or even if you're thinking about getting it. You know, I'm going to give you some general advice on what to do afterwards, but you know, this is going to be generalized advice. In reality, your specific situation might be different than the general advice that I can give here. So if there's any question, any doubts in your mind, or if you just want some additional clarity, send me a DM to my Instagram at Elevate Cyber, and I can take into account you know, your situation and give you the best advice on how you can move forward here. So first, we must understand the role that a certification plays in the process. So you need to level up holistically and certs are just one part of that overall process. Now, second, we must understand that the OSCP is different from a real pen test. Even though it's a great certification, it's not exactly the same. So there's different goals, basically. The goal for the OSCP is to find remote code execution vulnerabilities and get user flags and root flags on the machine. So basically, you try to hack in and you get the user flag, get the root flag. Now, the purpose of an actual pen test is a little bit different. It's more so to find and report as many vulnerabilities or security issues as possible, even if those security issues are not related to what we call remote code execution, which allows you to, you know, essentially when you think of hacking into a server, that's what that is. Now, third, we must understand that all certifications are inherently outdated. So technology, especially in cybersecurity, moves very fast and no certification could hope to remain current at all times. So instead of focusing on the techniques that you learn, it's more important to focus on the mindset and the process behind those techniques. And with these three core things out of the way, so where do we actually go from here. Well, a lot of people that are struggling to land a job at this stage, they just jump over to the next cert. So they'll go for maybe the follow up to OSCP, the OSEP. And I would highly advise against doing this, not because it's bad per se, but simply because there are better alternatives for you out there. So what are these alternatives? Well, I would say, first of all, you want to pick a specialization and go very deep into that because this helps you differentiate yourself. Because the problem is that everyone out there that is applying to these jobs, they roughly have the same things on their resume. So this helps you also move past that entry level because so many people are just restricting themselves to entry level jobs. They think, oh, I don't have any formal experience. I can only apply to entry level. So because of that, these end up being the most competitive. And, and I'm going to be honest with you, straight up the worst jobs um, that you can find on the market are these entry level ones because they know that they have the upper hand because so many people want their first opportunity in this field. Instead, don't be afraid to apply to the mid-level job, not necessarily the senior level roles, but you want to, you know, along doing that, you want to focus on building a very professional portfolio so you can showcase that you actually have the skill. And ideally you want to get that reviewed by a professional pen tester in the field. You know, if you want to book a consultation with me, I can help you as well. But even if you know of a friend or anyone that is in the field that can give you that feedback, that's going to be very crucial in getting a very polished report that's going to stand out from all the other you know, reports. One thing I would say about that is very few people write pen test reports to begin with because hacking is the fun part. Reporting is boring in comparison. So most people don't want to write a report. They don't do it. And out of the people that do, most of the time, there's so many mistakes they're making. So if you can get this one reviewed, that will be very, very big for you. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, though. Even with knowledge of all of these things, it can still be tough to land your first job in this field. Now, the good news, though, is that this is the toughest part of the process. And once you break past it and land that first job, you'll never have to stress out about finding a job ever again. So if you feel like you could use some guidance on this toughest stage in your journey, send me a DM to my Instagram at Elevate Cyber with the word guidance. That way I know you came from this video. Or if you just like to see a cybersecurity roadmap to make sure that you are job ready, you know, then go ahead and check out the video on screen right now. I'll see you right over there.